Joyce Bryant The Blonde Bronze Bombshell is the title of the one-woman stage play I will like to pitch to you. You see, singer Joyce Bryant achieved fame in the late 1940s and early 1950s as a nightclub performer. With her signature silver hair and tight mermaid dresses, she became the toast of the town, garnering such nicknames as the voice you'll always remember, the black Marilyn Monroe, and the bronze blonde bombshell. Miss Bryant became the first dark-skinned African-American sex symbol on the Cabaret Café Society circuit. Before Miss Bryant, dark-skinned black women in the U.S. was only seen as mammies, she single-handedly changed that image when she appeared on the same bill as Josephine Baker. Not wanting to be upstaged, Bryant colored her hair silver using radiator paint, and performed wearing a tight silver dress and silver floor-length mink. Bryant's silver hair and tight backless cleavage revealing mermaid dresses became her trademark look and combined with her four-octave voice range, further elevated her status into one of the major headlining stars of the early 1950s. By the way those dresses left little to imagine and they were so tight, she had to be carried on and off stage and it's been reported she shimmy and twisted so much she lost four pounds each performance. Beginning in 1952, Bryant released a series of recordings on the OK record label, three of her most well-known standards, Love for Sale, Drunk with Love, and Runnin' Wild were banned from radio play for being too sexy. She was moaning and groaning on her provocative recording years before Donna Summer's Love to Love You Baby. Miss Bryant, along with Lena Horne, Hilda Sims, Eartha Kitt, and Dorothy Dandridge was named one of the five most beautiful black women in the world. This was a big deal, for the first time young dark-skinned girls had someone to admire who looked like them. Like many other black entertainers back in the day, Bryant often faced discrimination and was outspoken on issues of racial inequality. In 1952 she became the first black entertainer to headline at a Miami Beach hotel, defying threats by the KKK who had burned a life-size cross near the hotel entrance. Bryant earned up to $3,500 a performance in the early 1950s, but she had grown weary of the industry. The silver paint had damaged her hair, she didn't enjoy working on the smoke-filled cabaret clubs, and she felt uneasy with her image. She once said religion had always been a part of her life, and felt it was a very sinful thing singing so sexy, with tight, low-cut gowns on. Bryant hated the men, often gangsters, who frequented the clubs in which she worked. She was once beaten and raped in her dressing room after rejecting one of the gangster's advances. Her disenchantment with the nightclub subcultures, led Miss Bryant to quit performing in the late 1950s at the height of her popularity, becoming the blonde, bronze, bombshell in mid-century nearly became a deadly mixture. She devoted herself to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A decade later, she returned to show business as a trained classical vocalist touring internationally with the Italian, French, and Vienna opera companies and later became a vocal coach for Broadway divas like Phyllis Hyman in Sophisticated Ladies, Jennifer Holliday in Dreamgirls and Raquel Welch in Woman of the Year. Joyce Bryant, is, the original Queen Bee of Song.